Welcome! This video is part 4 of a 9-part series and is intended for state, tribe, and territory disaster behavioral health coordinators and others involved with disaster planning, response, and recovery. The two learning objectives of this video are to identify steps to take before a disaster incident to identify potential resource requirements and existing gaps, and demonstrate an understanding of key financial and administrative functions and responsibilities to implement in a disaster behavioral health response. First, let's discuss the Incident Command System, or ICS. This is the combination of facilities, equipment, personnel, procedures, and communications operating within a common organizational structure, designed to aid in incident management activities. Pre-ICS determinations include recognizing and anticipating the requirement that organizational elements be activated and taking the necessary steps to delegate authority as appropriate, establishing incident facilities as needed, establishing the use of common terminology for organizational elements, position titles, facilities, and resources, and rapidly evolving from oral direction to the development of a written incident action plan. Next, an assessment is always a good tool to help identify available resources and existing gaps that may need to be addressed. Defining the levels of capacity and assessing roles includes the ability to specify disaster behavioral health response and recovery roles within your organization. Does every individual have a clear idea of their specific role when it comes to a disaster? This assessment provides an opportunity to set expectations for your team and organization and to provide resources that will be needed before, during, and after an incident to support disaster behavioral health roles. You might also want to use this assessment as an opportunity to take inventory and categorize resources available for an incident. Finally, establish and verify the level of capability needed. Each disaster behavioral health event has financial and administrative functions and responsibilities that must be implemented. This checklist includes documenting resource management during an incident, these are the costs incurred, identifying requirements of the reimbursement, procuring approvals for goods during a disaster, mobilizing items to the disaster area quickly, and tracking and reporting of staff involved in process. Once the incident is over, the remaining steps are to recover or demobilize, reimburse incurred expenses, and again inventory resources. Additional administrative functions include your communication capacity, continuity of operations, and credentialing of responders and volunteers. This concludes the financial and administrative preparedness video within the Promising Practices series. Thanks for tuning in! The subsequent videos in this series will explore each of the standards that can enhance your state disaster behavioral health plan. To view an expanded version of this video, go to www.samsa.gov slash DTAC slash webinars dash podcasts and scroll down to the Promising Practices in Disaster Behavioral Health Planning series. Established by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, the Disaster Technical Assistance Center, DTAC, supports SAMHSA's efforts to prepare states, territories, and tribes to deliver an effective mental health and substance use-related response to disasters. For training and technical assistance inquiries, you can call SAMHSA DTAC toll-free at 1-800-308-3515 or email DTAC at samhsa.hhs.gov or you can visit www.samsa.gov slash DTAC. Before we conclude, we'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Tony Spire, who contributed the original content for this video.